Hello and good morning and welcome to a FOPWA's second action circle cycle in the appreciative inquiry cycle. Today is September 19th, 2020, and we just passed the new moon on September 17th, two days ago, which is when we have our new beginnings and set our intentions. And now as we're in the waxing phase of the moon, we are getting, we're started, uh, getting started on um, defining things and exploring possibilities. So welcome everybody. It is September 19th, as I said, and today is National Dance Day. Um, it's also International Talk Like a Pirate Day, so ahoy mateys. And it's the beginning of Oktoberfest, which I grew, my family is from Leavenworth, Washington, which is a Bavarian village. So Oktoberfest is a big deal in my family. Um, so I've got some, I've got some people in my family who are like, they're hosting Oktoberfest in Leavenworth, Washington. So um, welcome everybody. My name is Abigail Twyman. I'm joining you today from the home I share with my husband, Dustin, and our Dr. Zeppelin in the community of Nocky Bay, which is located on Northern Prince of Wales Island in Southeast Alaska, which is located in Clinket Ani, the land of the Clinket people, which they also shared with the Haida and Simshians specifically in what is the ancestral homeland of the Tuxican or T Coast Town tribe. I'm honored to be able to share this space with my ancestors and the ancestors of those indigenous to the land I currently have inhabit, who filled my soul with a fire that fuels my action. I am dedicated to remembering forward and passing along their immense wisdom for the benefit of generations, future generations, and the protection of our shared home. I'm also deeply honored to be able to share this space with all the beautiful humans and change catalysts who have been inspired and empowered to join our pod. I am dedicated to using this privileged body I was born into and this platform to catalyze collective action. And I thank you for your commitment to acting in the service of creating peace for yourself, your family, your community, and all inhabitants of Mother Earth. Um, action circles are all about learning how to have more effective conversations around challenging topics, as well as effectively collaborating with others who share our vision, mission, and values. When we come to circle, we assume the answers to all our questions are within the circle because we've brought the right group of people together with a collective wealth of knowledge and experience. Our guiding theory is that our respective change efforts within our personal and professional lives, as well as our movements and organizations, have had limited impact on the overall trajectory of the data. Therefore, it's incumbent upon us to adjust our approach. By bringing voices together and guiding our conversation in a new yet very old way, we have the potential to develop plans of action which are much more likely to get us to the end goal, a truly just, equal, and equitable and peaceful world. The way it used to be and the way it always should have been. Our goal is to catalyze the spread of action circles across the world in the service of creating peace through collective action. Before we get started, we always need to um, center ourselves around our um, agreements. And as I read them, I will post them in the chat as well. Um, so our first agreement is that while every action circle is recorded, and made public, the stories shared within the circle should only be shared in a way that protects, uplifts, and inspires and empowers others. The second agreement is that we listen for understanding and are mindful of how our words and actions impact the flow of the circle and take responsibility for addressing any hurts we may cause. Our third agreement is that we know we won't solve all these complex problems overnight, but we are committed to learning and unlearning so we can be more impactful in our actions. <clears throat> the fourth agreement is that from time to time we'll pause to regather our thoughts or focus and silence counsel will be call, can be called for by any member of the circle by using the chat function and the terms waste, why am I still talking, or Gelmo. Good enough, let's move on. The fifth agreement is that um, the chat function is reserved for contributions from those who choose typing as their preferred mode of communication and for gems or quotes harvested by the scribes, any of you, any of us in the circle, 
Um, and you're always welcome to pass by speaking or typing pass in the chat. And our, oops. And our final agreement um, is that whenever possible, we pause to take, uh, we pause before speaking and use sound verbal behavior when sharing our sp perspectives within the circle. Our introduction for today, so please introduce yourself um, and share your land acknowledgements, your acknowledgement of the agreements. And our check-in question is, um, what cloud formation would describe how you are feeling today. And if you don't know the technical term for the clouds, that's okay. You can just describe what those clouds look like. And we'll start with Sheena as our leader of the day. Good morning, everyone. Happy to see your faces. My name is Sheena Trait. Uh, I refer to myself as a positive behavior analyst professionally, and in my life, I am a yogi, a mother, a sister, a daughter, um, a dog mom, all kinds of things. Um, I reside in Southern Arizona, which was originally inhabited by the Tohono O'odham people or the Odom people peoples, um, which is a more, um, I would say, modern way of referring to the people who are, come from the Tohono O'odham and who still exist in our culture here today. I acknowledge the agreements and I would say I was thinking about the different uh, cloud um formations i would say you know those cumulus cloud what are the clouds where they almost look like bubbles of fluff um i think it's called a cumulus cloud um yeah, that's correct alex give me a thumbs up cool okay i would i would definitely go with that one just sort of uh fluffy and um and but organized looking um, and beautiful. Thank you, and I pass on to Alex. Let's see, so I'm Alex, an eccentric existentialist philosopher and high functioning escapist. Um, let's see, I live in Madison, Wisconsin, originally settled by the Ho-Chunk people. Uh, I acknowledge the agreements and I'm feeling in nimbo status right now. Um, nimbus is the just any storm cloud and then stratus is the uh, the flat low ones that are just a a ceiling. So um, that's that's not really a bad thing for me. Like okay, nice and overcast, gray ceiling with some energy in it. So something like that. Nice. And I pass to Abby. Thank you. Um, I am Abby. I acknowledge the agreements. I am currently, uh, as I mentioned, on the land of uh, the Clinket, Haida, and Simshian people. And um, my cloud feeling is, I believe that it's, um, mm, now I can't remember, the, the wispy, like, I want to say cirrus, but I think that I'm not, I, yes, okay, yeah, and we're like, we're doing good, we're doing good with our cloud nomenclature today, so yeah, so I'm feeling kind of that wispy, ethereal feeling, um, so that would be how I would describe myself in cloud terms. And I'll pass to Nancy. To me. Hi, uh, my name is Nancy Salinas and I live in Phoenix. I'm a secular humanist, optimist, mother. I can't speak today. <laughs> I acknowledge the agreements um, stated earlier by Abby. 
And uh, the land acknowledgement, I live here in the Phoenix, North Phoenix area, which uh, inhabitants were, um, are Hohokam. And um, the second question, uh, I also feel like um, a cumulus uh, fluffy cloud. And uh, I like the, the little spaces of airiness uh, with uh, clari like clarity. Um, so kind of, um, kind of that sort of vibe uh, with those um, uh, cumulus clouds. And I pass this over to Maximus. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. Hi, uh, my name is Maximus. Um, I am a, I call myself a shaper these days, a shaper, shaper of verbal behavior. And, uh, I, um, I teach uh, psychology at Butte College and um, uh, um, I acknowledge the, um, uh, the agreements, of course, and uh, also land acknowledgement. We live here in the area of the Mechupta tribe, uh, also the Yahi Indians and the um, Maidu tribe. And so, um, you know, I just uh, heard the other day some music that I knew as a teenager maybe you've heard of this song by red bone we were all wounded by wounded knee have you ever heard that song you probably have never heard it you should look it up it's really a good song and it was the song which was very popular all over europe it, it hit the charts can you believe that that song was banned in the united states for a long time they didn't even allow it to be played on the radio and 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 it's just amazing and i just found out about that uh, just by accident in any case, um, I just wanted to share that with you. In uh, uh, cloud formation, I like the uh, the stringy clouds. You know, like when it is uh, when there's the long lines in the sky, and uh, you can sort of see a dragon or something, or you see some sort of thing in there. Anyway, so that's that's kind of what it is uh, for today. And uh, oh, here my um, yeah, let put the clock on it. Put the clock on it. It's time's up. <laughs> All right. Okay, awesome. Thank you all. So today we have our centerpiece is this beautiful picture of this hummingbird. Um, and I, I love hummingbirds. We have, we have them up here in Alaska and I, I dream to one day plant our property with all things that will attract, you know, the butterflies and the hummingbirds and everything. So this, when you shared this, Sheena, it brought great joy to my heart. Um, so today as we get centered and get ready to move into our appreciative inquiry discussion and um, start expanding upon our um, topics and answering and asking asking and answering questions related as we get into the discovery phase. Um, before we do that, I want to guide us in a, a guided meditation visualization called the magic carpet ride. And so get your get on your magic carpet. Get your little hummingbird, hummingbird next to you and find a comfortable seated position and close your eyes or gently um, relax them as we get ourselves centered and um, in this space. So I invite you to take a deep breath in and Gently close their, your eyes if they are not already. And I am going to count down from five. And when I get to one, your whole body will be very heavy and deeply relaxed. You will feel so relaxed that you won't even want to move. But just stay still and enjoy the wonderful relaxation you feel. Five starting to feel the relaxation of your body. Four, your legs are starting to feel heavy, your arms too. 
three heavier and heavier and more relaxed and comfortable. Two more and more relaxed with each number. <coughs> and one, now your whole body is a very heavy. Now imagine a beautiful, colorful magic carpet underneath of you. This magic carpet is beautiful with exquisite colors. And someone took great care and love making this very special magical carpet just for you. I invite you to take your reach down with your hand and touch the smooth texture of that brightly colored carpet. It is so soft. And now wrap your hands around the two tassels that hang down on the front quarters. Notice how the tassels tighten and turn up like handles and you feel perfectly safe. The magic carpet starts off slowly, making sure you feel safe and comfortable. And the magic carpet gently sways and sweeps up and makes you giggle with delight. What an adventure. It takes you up into the sky, higher and higher, up, up into the pillowy soft clouds. It feels wonderful to be here, feeling free and completely relaxed. Now look down and see the beautiful green patches below you. The trees seem to wave up at you while the wind blows them gently back and forth. And you see fields and houses that look quite tiny from all the way up where you are. You begin to let go of any worries, any problems or, or difficult thoughts seem to vanish. And you leave them all far behind as you relax and enjoy your magical carpet ride. Glide along with this carpet and know that you are in full control, going faster and faster, or perhaps slower if you choose. You can ride the magical carpet for as long as you wish, floating above or gliding down as you get a better look at anything you'll see. When you're ready to land, take in a deep breath, and glide your magic carpet back down to the ground and stop comfortably and very gently, bringing all the wonderful, happy feelings back with you. Now open your eyes and take a big breath and another big stretch when you're ready. Take a step off your magic carpet. Get ready for some appreciative inquiry. All right. And Sheena, I am passing to you. Thank you, Abby. I loved that visualization. That was really great. Uh, okay, so. Let's pick up where we left off last week. Um, there's something that I put in the chat. If you have access to a printer, I would highly recommend that you print it out. I wasn't able to put it in a format that you could type directly into it. Um, but if there's a way that, uh, I know there's a way to do that, it just it takes time. So if you have a printer and you're able to print it out, I would highly recommend doing that as an artifact that you can take with you after we're done with our, our series and keep with you. Does anyone not have access to a printer? I or, do. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say I do, but I was able to open it as a PDF file and I can edit it that way. Oh, you can edit it the way it is. Yeah. You can, cool. yeah, you can write on it. If you click on edit, um, fill and sign, sorry. If you do fill and sign, then okay. you're able to use some, some of those functions because I don't have the paid subscription. Okay, perfect. So if you can edit it how it is in PDF, perfect. I probably knew there was a way to do that as well. 
So where we were, um, maybe I can bring, is it okay with everyone that I bring Nancy up to speed a little bit on where we at? She's the only one who wasn't here last week, yeah? Okay, so Nancy, what we did last week is we talked a little bit about um, systems. So systems are, you know, it can be yourself, it can, they're, they're uh, um, it can be your community, it can be uh, your workplace, that can be a system that you're looking at, it could be the world, which is obviously a grander system, um, it could be your family, um, but it's, it is a um, group for which you would want to focus on and a group where you would like to see some positive change occur. So something that maybe you would, you know, are you're struggling with a little bit um, with this group or you would like to see some improvements. Um, and so we we started to pinpoint a system to focus on. Um, and we went through that last week and we started getting into um, as you can see on the handout, there's a place where there's a topic. And so what I did is I went through and I asked everyone what system they would like to focus on. Um, so you might want to take a second to just think about that. It might jump out at you right away and you go and you know exactly what it is that you want to do um, and what you want to focus on. Um, and then we are using, um, this is the first sort of part of the AI process. I'm going to pull up and share my screen of the image that I showed everyone. We're in this defined stage, right? Um, so um, we are defining what our topic is, what the problem is, and what we want to flip. Um, and then we're going to use a series of um, once you know your system, we're going to use a series of adjectives and action verbs to create a awesome tagline, as if you were putting this in a newspaper and this were the focus of um, what you're planning on um, doing. So I'm going to pull up both the define and the group of adjectives, and then I'll share my screen with everyone because where we're at is getting our topics down today. So I'm gonna help you all sort of hone in on that. And then we're going to work through the next step, um, which will be the discovery phase. Uh, so, okay, let me go ahead and find that really quick and I will share both of those with you all. Okay. So just to show, let's see. Can you guys see the, this is where we left off last time. Can you see the define strip there? So this is mostly for, um, we sort of started to talk about this. And Nancy, is anything jumping out at you in terms of number one, what system you want to focus on? Um, <clears throat> sort of. Um, I think okay. I still need to think about it a little bit more, but I can kind of still go along. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and for everyone else here, last week we already wrote some things down, right? We already sort of started pinpointing these things. So uh, I developed, where's my notes? 
Alex. I'm gonna, the way in which we're gonna, we have to go about this is the format is, has to be a little bit different than what we're used to. So it might be um, because our systems and our topics are unique and individual to us specifically, what I'm gonna do is we're all gonna be working together and helping each other, but we have to sort of focus on one person at a time. So when you have your talking piece, it's going to, the questions are going to be specific to you and what it is that you posed, that you care about, that you want to change. So if it's okay, I would, I would like to focus on um, Alex first, is that okay? And um, I'm gonna stop my screen share and share another. Um, yeah, and then while you're while you're pulling that up, Sheena. So I just wanted to kind of um, with with action circles and the circle way framework. There, there's talking piece council where we have we ask a question and then um, allow everybody yes. an opportunity to respond. But then there's also conversation council, which is, which is how I how we would describe what we're doing today, which is we have a general question but each person is going to have an opportunity to kind of talk about, you know, talk about it, but then everybody else has an opportunity to kind of popcorn and provide, you know, um, ask additional questions or their input as well. So we can kind of like, yeah, I agree. Like we'll start with Alex and I'll kind of circle around his topic and discovery questions, and then we can move on to the next person and kind of circle around their individual ones. So I think it's going to be perfect. Okay, that'll work. Okay, awesome. So for example, Alex, I'm gonna screen share again, but last week, Alex, what you said is that um, you would like to see a more engaged people and you would like to see people taking more responsibility. Is that accurate? Okay. Before we go on, is the, the people you're focusing on, is this within a specific, what system is this focusing on? Is this in general just people that you like general society, or is this specific to a different group of people? Uh, society in general, everyone across the board. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what I would encourage you to do, and you know what? Um, yeah, okay, we'll just stick with you, Alex. Um, there's a list of verbs and adjectives here, and we want to take what you aspire to create change, and we want to create your topic. So for example, um, you're looking for a more engaged society, a society who wants to take who who is willing to take more responsibility as citizens of the world and the in their communities so we take that and we create a topic statement using these and that's going to drive everything we're doing from this point forward it is something that is going to be like yes this is what we're doing and so maybe we can all help Alex based on his desire to encourage a more engaged society and um, a society that is more willing to take responsibility. 
perhaps we can help. I mean, typically it's helpful to kind of highlight certain words that jump out at you. Um, take a moment and look at these words uh, and what jumps out at you in terms of creating a topic for what you want to change. So can we, are we all gonna look at the verbs and then maybe put our suggestions in the chat? I think that's a really great idea. Um, Alex, you can share with us, um, you know, off mute with your talking piece and then maybe the rest of us knowing where understanding where Alex is coming from, maybe we can help him um, bring his vision to life through some powerful words here. So I'm gonna offer some suggestions and examples of what I'm thinking is a place that you might be, um, but it may not resonate with you. So, um, but I'll throw out some examples to kind of give you guys an idea of what a topic might look like, you know. Um, so something like that might be um, something that you might want to do or, um, So that's sort of some uh, what we want to look for. Something that really, you know, gets you fired up. But if you were to show this to a group of people, would this catch their attention too? So, or, you know, Inspire sharing capability. Ooh. There are a lot of really good words here and a lot of them that I think fit very well. And uh, part of the, the toolbox that I've been gathering is words like these to describe all the different ways that people can help. So it's, uh, it's pretty tricky to sum all of them up. Ooh. Inspire sharing capability. So mm, these are also good suggestions. Yeah, that's great. That tells me that you are looking to light a fire underneath some people's asses. Pardon my French. Is that accurate? Pretty much, yeah. Um, including my own. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Great. So is, I mean, your focus is on, yeah, great. So, okay, let's just go ahead and fill in. Here's the cool thing. You can write down something that jumps out at you right now, play around with all these adjectives. Again, I can put it in chat so you can have it. You can play around with it and something might come to you that's, that just fits better. So you can iterate and play around. Um, the main thing is that this is something that is inspiring the change that you're looking for through language. Okay, 
So, um, ooh, broad and responsible horizons. Nice. All these are fantastic. Fun to kind of so, catch phrases. Yeah. So I think what I might do, Abby, is before jumping into the discover, maybe I move to the next person and we help get our topics down. Sound good? Okay. Yeah, um, so Alex, you can you can keep thinking about yours and in looking at other people's, we can it might you know you might want to change it. So um, is it okay to let's see the numbers? I can't see the numbers of who's next. Was Alex even first? Yeah, he was. It's I'm I'm number two. Okay, so Abby, let's go to you. Um, what I wrote down for Abby from last week, what she vocalized was reconnection with each other and reconnection with community and healing without forcing. So it's kind of looking at a lot of things, but I'm, I'm seeing a big community theme here. So, Abby, would it be accurate to say that your focus is, your system is definitely community, um, your community specifically, correct? Yeah, yep. As a starting place, at least, which is always good because we can't solve the world's problems without starting with our own communities first. Mm-hmm. Um, well, at least starting with our own communities is a good place to start. So, okay, that's good to, to know. We know that we've, we've connected with your system. We know that you're wanting to create an inclusivity, create a connection with, within the people of the community. Um, so um, let's all help Abby um, is there something, Abby, that jumps out at you and then maybe we can all help Abby create her topic around um, community connection? This is what she she's, cares about changing, connecting her community. So I'm gonna... Abby, can you do me a favor and type in the specific community that you live in? I forgot what it's, it the is name. and how it's. Yeah. Oops, I can't even spell it. Rockety Bay. Thank you. Right? Nice. Nice. Great. So see these words, I mean you can use them, but they're more like brainstorming words mm -hmm. that can really get you not only will it fire you up, but if you are wanting to work with people and create this change, actively create this change, 
it's going to grab people's attention. And that's what we're looking for with the with topic generation. All right, awesome, Abby. Do you feel comfortable moving on to? Yeah. Um, or is Nancy? To me. <clears throat> yeah. So okay. um, I was trying to think of a community uh, that I'd like to uh, have um, work, work with. <laughs> Uh, I'm thinking young, young, um, young people, um, and I guess young is relative, but um, teenagers, children, um, and I picked some words uh, because it really helped to conceptualize what I'm trying to get at, and uh, do all the words have to come from this list? Because one of them is definitely not going to be there, because <laughs> it's, con it's counterintuitive, um, but I'm thinking um, young community in terms of the toxic positivity that we have built as a society um, and how um, discomfort is seen as intolerable. And I was thinking of like reaching out to a young community somehow and fostering healthy discomfort as a value. Ah. And this comes from like, um, especially um, seeing teenage girls uh, with the extremely high uh, rates of anxiety, especially since social media came around uh, and how anxiety now in, in young girls is seen as uh, the norm instead of, you know, it, it, it's actually the norm. And I was, I was talking to uh, my mentor a, a few years ago, and he's the one that told me he's a clinical psychologist. He's like, Nancy, anxiety in teenage girls is the norm now. And I'm like, that is so sad. So, um, and as I've been exploring uh, this area, um, I'm just thinking how part of it is just not teaching our kids that it's okay not to feel wonderful all the time. Um, so basically, yeah, um, the, the words would be fostering healthy discomfort as a value. And if anybody has a better way of like phrasing that, I would appreciate it. And by the way, the anxiety thing is not just with girls, but they've seen like the greatest increase with young teenage girls. But everybody, I think, <laughs> has probably seen an increase every part of um, society. But oh, youth connected value to values. I I like that. Values driven youth. I love that. I'm gonna copy those and put them on my document that I'm taking notes on. And if anybody has anything to. Um, be with the verbs and adjectives, but also like if you have any thoughts on how to kind of add to what I just said, because I just thought of it today because I wasn't here last week. So I don't know if I'm missing anything uh, from, from the task. Oh, I love that modeling calm resilience, fostering healthy discomfort. I love that. Thank you. Um, you, 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 you basically, you pretty much nailed down your system. Oh, thank you. you nailed down your, what it is the you know, the group that you want to focus on in creating change. And you have an idea, a very specific idea for what, what it is that you're um, wanting to focus on. So yeah, I think I have a really great idea. And I think everyone here has a really great idea on what it is that you envision. Thank you, everybody. I'm like copying your little phrases and putting them in my doc Word document. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, all right. I think um, the next person, I'm number three, and then it's Maximus, I believe. All right, Maximus. Are you ready? So, yeah. okay. All right. So, for you, Maximus, what I wrote down was a lot of different things. So I might need help in kind of honing it in. So you tell me what, what resonates most with you. You wrote 
or what you expressed last week was um, increasing and in, you know increasing motivation, increasing a sense of community, um, and fostering this connection with education. Mm -hmm. Has that changed, or is there some? Is there anything additional that you want to express, or is there anything that you want to hone in on that is resonating with you most from yeah, what I, I took that you expressed? Yeah, at this point, I, I really want to ac ad address uh, perception. And so the ability to, to consider the importance of the things you just said. And what what is um, helping people to yeah to sort of see the relevance of things, see the relevance of 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 knowledge and the relevance of education, yeah. Even the relevance of perception itself as a as a as a you know why why is that important. <laughs> You know, do you ever think about perception that, and then, and perhaps also with that perspective taking that you also are able to view things from different perspectives and, and can sort of switch. Yeah. And that you don't have to keep looking at it the same way. You can actually decide to look at it another way and, and see where that's gone, you know, and, and come up with a whole new approach <laughs> just because you change perspectives. Okay. What do you think about what people are typing into the chat for your topics? Oh, I'm trying to read, sorry, sorry. Uh, see. Um, yeah. Whoa, um, Alex, you a rock with this. Everyone is doing yeah. Everyone's writing some really great ideas. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's good. What would you What would you pick? I'm going to give you a minute to kind of think on what people contributed. I, I like spark perceptive perspective, and yeah, inspire empowered curiosity. I I find that really good. Oh yeah, nourish nourish perspective taking yeah of course i mean it it needs to be stimulated and and reinforced yeah all good i i appreciate thank you so those those should give you something to play around with right right which one um which one jump which what jumps at you most um <laughs> Enlightened perspective. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say that jokingly because I think enlightenment is overrated. But <laughs> yeah, I think. But I, do, I mean, if if people do have a a new perspective and then and it is working that new perspective then they are enlightened for all i know, <laughs> you know? So, so yeah no i like that <clears throat> it's just a perspective taking stimulate kind of brings it, bring, oh so it brings it back to the earth again this enlightenment construct yeah okay so the enlightened perspective jumps out at you most yep so that's what you're going to want to type into or write in your topic on that form that I shared with everybody. Can I ask you that form, where, where do I find that form? Yes, it's in the chat. And it's at oh. the very, if you scroll to the very top, oh. it says AI template action circles 2020. Oh, okay. Thank you. Just click to open so you can download it. You can print it out if it's easier for you to write in, or you can write uh, directly into it or type directly into it. Thanks. Okay, so we're moving a little 
quickly. How's everyone doing with with um, how, how's everyone doing with uh, what we've picked for our system and our topic? And does that feel like a good place as a foundation for us to move forward at this point? Yeah. Thumbs up. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're in our discover phase now. But don't worry, you can always go back to this define place. And at, and, and at the very end, I'm going to show you, I have a handout that's got all of these together in one place. So you can get, you can iterate and play around with it as much as you want. But I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll share this. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to share um, the next, let me see, share or discover, discovery, all right. All right, can everyone see that okay? Okay, perfect. So thank you, Abby, for adjusting to the, the, the format of this is, is because we're focusing, everyone's got their individual thing. Thank you for adapting the action circles to, to be a little bit different today. Um, so Alex, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna propose some questions specifically to you that I crafted. Um, and then you can either choose to use them or as a group, we can help Alex craft questions together. What we're looking for in this particular phase is looking at what's already working or what we've seen to already work in the past of what you wanna change. We're starting from a place of strength and what we've seen work. This is our starting place. So um, Alex, I made some, I crafted some questions for you. I'm gonna, um, Let's see, let me scroll down and see what topic you kind of ended up. What was your topic that you honed in on, Alex? And you can come off mute. Uh, there were many of them. Okay. Let's see, you can go okay. with like, there are a lot of ones that uh, that seem to work equally well. Um, where did I put that? Oh, that was over here. Okay. okay. Mm, we can go with um, we can go with uh, inspire sharing capability for now, or okay. yeah, that'll work. Okay. All right. All right, so I'm going to share a question I crafted specifically for what you expressed based off mm -hmm. of this and based off of what you're looking to change. Alex, will you describe to us some examples in your life when you have observed shared capability or when either you or others have been most engaged hmm let's see examples I'll, be, I'll, I'll type it in the chat 
and, and Maximus is having a hard time finding the document. So Maximus, I'm gonna send you the file directly really quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, first that comes to mind is uh, in helping people with um, with using empathy mindset to understand other people and uh, and how they see the world and what they want uh, what they want and what they're most concerned about that sort of thing. And what does that look like? Where have you seen that in your life? Where you were like, yes, that person is engaged, that person knows how to take responsibility. Can you think of examples where you've seen others exhibit what you're trying to Oh, okay. Um... That's what I'm looking for here. Let's see. And don't worry, these questions are meant to be, these are inquisitive mm -hmm. questions, so it's okay if you have to take time to think about them. Mm -hmm. As the thing is, I'm a lot faster to answer abstract conceptual questions than questions about myself or, or my memories. Uh -huh. um, or if it's easier to think about, you can look at the guide that I, the screen that I shared with you, and you can take what it is that you're focusing on and fit it in one of these, make it easier. I just, I, I wrote this as a place from curiosity. Um, I'm, I'm truly curious on where have you seen in your life the best examples of in, in, you know, people who inspire shared capability or in people who are engaged? Um, let's see, first example that comes to mind is, um, so I do, um, like I practice uh, martial arts, not in a super formal setting, but I have a friend who's, uh, who teaches martial arts and I really like the way he does things because he he explains what everything is for and also even the historical context of uh, of things and puts all these different concepts together and so the the effect is empowering people not just to perform physical actions but also to be able to think more uh, to think in a more independent, fortified manner, like to, to be able to take care of themselves, that sort of thing. So you're Mart, when you think of someone who inspires shared capability, who's mm -hmm. an engaged person, who mm -hmm. demonstrates responsibility, you think about your mar martial arts teacher or this martial arts teacher and what he does. So that was my next question is, what is he doing and what is he exhibiting mm -hmm. when they are in, he is engaged or when, Let's, let's put this on you. What are you doing when you are engaged in your life? And how, did it, how do you show that to the world? Hmm. Well, let's see. I usually, I'm engaged when I use um, education mindset to help, uh, help people figure things out or um, to help people understand how things work and uh, and also cunning mindset to understand what how what will happen by default and what they can do about that um 
I'd like to be more engaged with other mindsets. But, uh, I guess I'm, I'm not entirely sure what things we're focusing on with, with discovery. Just, uh, are we looking for existing strengths that are already pretty strong, or are we looking for good examples of the things that we want to get better at? Both. Mm, okay. Yeah, definitely both. So we want to know what has worked that you've observed in your life in the past and what's working now. And that's what we want to get in touch with so that we have written examples of what this looks like, a really clear picture of what this looks like when it is working. Hmm. And where, where in your life you've experienced that? Can I, can I share it? a thought? Okay. Go ahead, Abby. Yeah. Okay. Um, so can you, Alex, can you say again what your, like, what your topic was, just mm -hmm. so I have that in my mind? Um, let's see. Inspiring, sharing capability, I think. Yes. Um, so when you were... So Sheena's question, initial question was about, you know, can you think of somebody or tell a story about someone in your life who has demonstrated this, who is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. If you were going to define what that mm -hmm. is, that would be like your case example. And you were describing your mm -hmm. martial arts instructor and kind of the things that I heard, like the, uh, like, oper like objective, like behaviors that I heard was you know, he explains things, he breaks it down, he gives the rationale for that, um, provides historical context for the information. So it's not just do this, it's do this, and this is what it looks like, and here's why you're doing it. So I kind of, so that's how my, that's where my brain went when you mm. asked that question, Sheena, was kind of like, who is the person, like, who is that person, and what are they doing that would be labeled what you want. Hmm. In that case, I think I left something out because the just explaining things that's he does that, but that's not the inspiring sharing capability thing. Like, like I can explain things. That's, that's not something I'm uncomfortable with doing. It's, um, he, I, I don't know if this applies to to everyone else, but he makes me want to be better, but not in that fired up, um, like not not in the aggressive coach sort of way. There's probably a word for that. Um, just very casual, low key, but. And uh, just the impression of, oh, I want to, I want to do this just to become stronger, just to keep up a bit. Just so that it's useful to me, not, not that I'm trying to meet anyone else's standards, but I want to, to make this useful to me and, and use it for myself, that sort of thing which that's what I want to do. I want people to, to want to learn things for their own use. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, I'm going to leave you with, I'm, I'm getting closer to, to understanding um, the goal of this is um, okay, so you want people to learn things for their own use. So you're, but I'm, I'm hearing that there's, you you want things for your some you have two systems you're looking at here you 
but also others. Um, and it sounds like you're looking kind of for this same change to happen for both, correct? Um, yes. Yeah, I, I would like people to be interested in, in learning things to become more independent, but also to, to be able to better uh, support and share with others. And that's something I need to work on as well. Okay. Yeah, I think that's great. Good. Thank you, Maximus. So the, what we're really getting at here is to this point, I want people to learn things for their own use. And I want myself to learn things for my own use and get better at that. What do you already, what, if, if I were to say, what mindsets are you best at? What mindsets are you best at? I'm asking. Oh, okay. So I wasn't sure if there was more to the question. Um, so I can combine, I'm best at perception in general. I can combine perception with communication to make education. And I can combine perception with facilitation to create cunning. Um, action... My attributes are weaker with action mindset. Okay. So mm -hmm. when you write on your paper, I want you to write down. I want you to answer that question. What mindsets am I best at? And that is your place, your starting place. And the second question is, what are some examples of mindsets that I've seen in others that I want to see more of, but that I've seen before in my life that demonstrate that they are getting closer to learning things for, on their own and using that in their lives. So the you part, you know what your strengths are. The next step is looking at what does that look like in others? Um, and where have you seen that in others? You've already mentioned your instructor, so maybe you use that as an example. And that is your discovery. That is your discovery of the best of what currently is and that you've seen before. And that's what we're getting at in this phase right here. That's what I would encourage you to put um, and write down and fill out in the discovery part of your form. Does that make um. sense? Uh, just to clarify, I'm looking for mindsets in others that are the same ones that I use or the ones that I want to use? The ones that you've seen that demonstrate that of what of, of that you've seen that really um, that you're really pleased. Like when you see that person, mm. you're like, wow, I wish I've I wish I've, I, I I wish I could see more people acting like that and and mm. doing those mindsets. Ah, uh, got it. You got it? So mm -hmm. find out where you've seen that before in your life and what person maybe you've seen do that in their life and what were they doing? How were they being? What mindsets were they using? And get connected to why that was awesome. Uh, and we'll move on to, so that's discovery, Alex, for you. And so let's move on to Abby. Are you next? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, I accidentally sent Maximus a bunch of private messages, but okay. Okay. So Abby, you may have had time to think about this already. I crafted some questions for you. Mm -hmm. Feel free to adjust them if you feel like you, you want, but I went ahead and I um, crafted a couple of things for you to connect to the best of what is, which is what this phase is all about. 
Um, so uh, what is your, what topic did you write down? Fuel genuine heart connection. Wow. Okay. I have to thank Alex for like that last, like he kind of threw that one in at the end. I was like, oh yes, that's so good. Yeah. Okay, Abby, so would you be willing to share a story with us when people in your community were genuinely connected and thriving? Yes. So the best example of that that I could think of was when our community came together to rebuild the, there's a, we have a community picnic beach and there is a building down there. There, there was a building down there that burned down due to an out of control campfire. Um, and then the community came together with donations and labor to rebuild it. Um, and it was like, it was the most interconnected and like genuinely, you know, just positive moment for our community that I've seen. Okay, beautiful. Um, so my next question was, what fueled the connection? What components were present in that scenario? You sort of answered that already. So uh, yeah, I think it was like a shared, so I'll let you, yeah. I'll let you, yeah. Yeah, so it was like that shared, the shared vision, a shared purpose, it was also, our community has a big um, 4th of July celebration every year that's pretty unique. And so that was like our, we had kind of a deadline of like, we've got to get something up and ready for 4th of July. So it was like a shared vision, but also like this, you know, that extra spark of motivation, you know, because we've got to get it done for this. Okay, so when you go to that section in the discovery phase, that's the stuff that you would write down. And feel free to dig deeper if you want. Mm -hmm. Totally up to you. Cool. And let's pass it to, I don't know where Maximus went. We lost him. Yeah, he, he had, to had to go. Oh no, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do Nancy. Okay. Um, oh, sorry about that. Of course, I would have to go off right now. Alexa, stop. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, so this part is what areas uh, have been successful with this uh, type of task, right? Correct. So for you, I haven't crafted questions for you, but... It's okay. I did come up with uh, something maybe. Do you have, useful. did you craft your own, you crafted your own question around your topic? I think so. Okay. Um, well, no, um, I'm just kind of going by the questions from the, from this, um, the screenshot that you have there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know if I'm doing this right, but I'm going to go for it. And then I am, uh, please give me some feedback. So some of the strategies uh, that have worked in the past um, not, not anything that I've done uh, specifically, but I've seen um, in regards in regard to helping young people, uh, kind of with coping and sitting with discomfort. I guess um, 
there, there's professionals that do act acceptance and commitment therapy with adolescents and adults. Um, some metaphors and stories that I have seen um, in the past that I think would be helpful. And I think I shared this before. Uh, it was this poem on the butterfly struggling. I don't know if you, who, who was here that heard that little story. Uh, I can share it uh, with you guys later, but it's basically, uh, you know, a little boy um, or a little girl uh, helped a cocoon, open a cocoon for a butterfly, and then the butterfly couldn't fly because he, she interrupted the struggle uh, that was necessary to get out of the cocoon, so then the butterfly couldn't fly. So it's kind of like that need for discomfort, that need to struggle um, basically, that those kind of metaphors and stories, I think, are helpful. Also, some research in stress management and really what stress means and how a, le a certain level of stress is healthy. So uh, kind of being flexible uh, so you don't break. So basically, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm going on a tangent. Let me know when I need to stop. Um, but um, basically, the word stress and the way we use stress uh, in psychology, we took it from uh, physics. So in physics, uh, we got it from like bending stress. So uh, in physics, if you have some sort of beam and they measure like how far you can bend it before it breaks, right? So a certain amount of, of, of stress is good uh, up to the point where like you don't break it. So basically that's where we took our, our word of, for psychological stress, we took it from physics. So basically it's like, it's good to like make it flexible, right? For things to be flexible, but not to the point where like you break the kid, right? <laughs> or you break their spirits or whatever. So like, yeah, we still need that, some of that flexibility. Um, looking at acceptance, right? Again, with ACT therapy, willing to experience difficult thoughts and emotions. Also, there's a lot of Buddhism, uh, Buddhistic practices, and we know that monks uh, practice kind of like sitting with discomfort. A lot of the psychological uh, research, uh, at least based on, it was based on some of those philosophical uh, and Buddhistic teachings. Um, so th those are all areas that have looked at this and I think have been successful to a degree and not proposing, but uh, um, what's that word? Uh, promoting, promoting this type of like being okay with some discomfort. And I think my goal is to like get him the younger, the better, right? Because then it becomes a habit <laughs> and it's not like, you don't have to like break so easily. <laughs> um, so I don't know if, if that hit the, the nail in the head, but um, even if it's around the area. <laughs> uh, yeah. Any feedback? Yeah. I can I ask you a question. Sure. Okay. Um, do you have um, examples of when you've s seen, or maybe there are um, specific act exercises that you've seen work best? Have you seen this in action, these principles? And do you have examples where you've seen this work? Yeah. Um, that I made think, a difference in someone's life? Yeah, I mean, uh, bes besides mine, uh, not that I'm an expert um, in that yet, and I don't expect to ever be an expert, just kind of like getting better and better with it. But I think uh, with like my daughter, you know, uh, I think she grew up in, she's 18 right now. So she grew up in the age of like technology and social media and um, her, us, you know, helping her practice some, okay, like avoiding that escape avoidance or, or I know it's, it's oxymoron, right? Uh, or, or, not escaping, avoiding difficult thoughts and, and seeing her throughout these three years kind of blossom, uh, starting from where she was at to now. 
uh, she seems a lot more okay, like um, accepting, I guess. Uh, that transformation between like, don't talk about that, or I don't want to hear about that, or don't like that sort of shut down versus like, okay, like she bringing up the uh, uncomfortable uh, topics and being open and willing to talk about them. And, and I know that a lot of it came from like sitting with discomfort. Um, not, I wasn't the, 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 the main person who helped her with it, but um, I did promote it and seeing her growth, I guess that would be an example of in people. And I, I haven't seen it in like, and I was trying to think, but I haven't really seen it in like, oh my gosh, this is the model. Like this person models that. I don't think any of us, uh, I, 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 that's what I'm striving for, for like more of us to become more that way. Uh, especially I, I think like the, the younger that you help people, the better. Um, but in terms of physical discomfort, I do have an example. <laughs> I, I have learned a lot from Sean and Abby knows Sean, but um, Sean, he's my partner and he, he's, uh, not in the psychological realm. I think, like I said, we all need help in that area. But um, with a physical discomfort, I've seen how he, he can push himself physically. And with that discomfort, and I'm like, I'm starting to emulate him more. And I'm, and I'm like, oh, wow, like, I can tolerate that. Like, I can tolerate getting up the mountain without stopping once. And I think you can use that as a metaphor with psychological dis discomfort too. Like, if you can experience it physically, and you can make that leap to experiencing it psychologically and being okay with it. Like this, this doesn't feel great, but I know when I get up there to that mountain, it's going to feel wonderful. <laughs> um, and it's okay. I can just push myself a little bit more. Does that make sense? I think that's awesome. I think everything that you just expressed would be where you fill out this discovery um, you know, the best of what is, um, and it's talking about what you've witnessed with your daughter and what contributed to her growth and improvement in being able to withstand and um, be more comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, because that act, as we know, it's all about um, psychological flexibility and being okay um, and, and, and developing that muscle for the, um, you know, getting over that shorter sooner for the longer later. Mm -hmm. Like, so in the short term, I'm okay to endure something that's uncomfortable or challenging or um, even upsetting, but in service of the things that matter most to me in the long term. Uh, thank you for saying that because now I'm putting also here like delayed gratification, I think is part of that, mm -hmm. right? Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so we have our system, we have our topic, we're looking at, okay, where, where have we seen this work? What do we know that works? and we're putting it down so that's visible. Um, and that's kind of where I wanted to stop today. The next part I think would be kind of, cause I can't be here next weekend. I think the next part would be really fun for people to do on their own, um, but I'll provide prompts and examples. Cause the next part is sort of the place where the next part is um, it's our dream phase. So it is when we are looking at the idealistic, it's where we're totally in our ideal world where it's like what we are looking to change. What does the world look like? What are people doing? How are people behaving? What are things like? Um, and you're really, um, I, I, on the handout, I made a big 
square, I mean, you can, there are questions to ask. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll go ahead and, sh and screen share, you know, examples of questions. So I'll probably just share that with everyone. Yes, that was the right one. And this is where we dream, baby of what might be. And there's that big square on the handout I made, and this is where you're drawing things, you're, whether it's chicken scratch, different colored pens, images, what is it that you envision? Like this is the world you wanna live in. This is your dream of how you want things to be. This is the fun part. This is the juicy stuff. And you don't hold back. You put everything down here. Whether you think it's realistic or not, that's not relevant here. Uh, so this is sort of the next step and where you get to play a little bit. Um, of what could be, of what might be in our dream idealistic world where things are how we have expressed in our topics and how we want them to be. And this is, so this is what's next. And this is all I had for today, really. Okay. So I have a, I have some thoughts because, um, so next weekend, so I have a conflict. I was actually able to get, um, an, an appointment for my MRI for my back on a weekend, which is, but it means I have to travel. So I am not, I'm also not able to, um, be here next weekend and neither is Sheena. But I think that the place what we're, where we're at within this process is a perfect opportunity to kind of be like thinking and working on this stuff during, you know, during the week, you know, you have all the your other, you have life going on. Um, and then next Saturday, you know, rather than meeting and everybody coming to Action Circle, unless you want to, unless like, um, Nancy or Alex, if you guys want to, um, I can give you the hosting capabilities so you can kind of come together and just talk through some of these things. It doesn't have to be recorded or anything like that, just a more informal circle. Um, and I was kind of thinking like taking this week to go, you know, to work on the dream part of it. And then even maybe Sheena kind of like, maybe we can talk about the design phase as well. And so, um, so we can start working on the next two sections independently. And then if you guys, you know, if you want to come together next weekend um, during this regular time, just to, you know, to talk some things out, that would be, you know, that's, that's awesome. And that would be a wonderful option. And then the following weekend, when we have the fourth gathering of the circle for the, and the final one for this cycle, um, it would be, you know, if we structure it where we're, you know, focused, we can focus on each individual person. And maybe, Sheena, if we can have, like, communication with you, do you want to do, like, kind of, it's like, a, we can, you can have kind of a direct connect with each of us individually. And then on our final, we can kind of come together and share, you know, share where we're at in our process and then kind of move on to that final, those kind of final two, the design and deploy and what that would look like. Does that sound like a good plan? Cool, okay. And you sent us the poster. That's the one that has all of the yeah. questions. I just opened it. I was about to ask you for it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So I think that's perfect. I feel like we've, we've gotten our, you know, we have, we know what system we're working on. We have a clear picture of what our topics are. Um, 
we've, you know, we've moved into the discover phase and have started to, you know, figure out how to ask the right questions, how to really discover what the best of what is. And I really, this, you know, I love this model so much. Um, and so, yeah, over the next week, so it'd kind of be two weeks from now. So in the next two weeks, working on our dream, um, the dream phase and starting in on the design phase, yep. connecting with Sheena one-on-one, -on -one, um, kind of behind the scenes. And then the four, and then we'll come together and share out and do some more. I like the conversation council. Um, perfect. I actually, um, it's the course that I'm, the couple courses that I'm teaching, they're coming up to uh, their final week mm -hmm. or so. So it, it would be uh, nice to take next week uh, to also wrap up on that course. Cool. So it's probably good timing anyway. Okay. If awesome. that's okay, Alex. Yeah, perfect. I think that, that that feels that feels right. It feels like that's where kind of everybody's at, and this is a a perfect opportunity to kind of dig in on your own, connect with Sheena and like directly, and then we'll circle back. So, awesome. Well, um, if you want to stick around for a little social time, I will be here. I want to share some things with you guys. Um, offline. Um, so I will end the recording and we will see you all in two weeks.